This is the historic launch of NASA's Artemis 1 mission, November 16th, 2022. It marks NASA's first serious attempt at a crew-capable lunar exploration mission since the end of the Apollo program 50 years prior. You're watching a pad view of the Space Launch System rocket awaiting a countdown to liftoff from camera 30-P2. It was filmed at 1,000 frames per second, over 40 times slower than a 24 FPS video. However, I've sped up the footage to double that speed for viewing purposes, or to 500 frames per second. Launching at night, the scene from the camera is dark at first as it's exposed to view bright details not seen by a standard camera. But at approximately 11.7 seconds to launch, the radio outward firing igniters, or sparklers, are seen igniting. These are used to burn off excess hydrogen as the four RS-25D engines begin firing up. The use of liquid hydrogen as part of the rocket's fuel comes with the possibility of the buildup of free hydrogen gas underneath the rocket prior to engine start, and if this excess gas were to ignite, a blast could occur that could damage the launch vehicle and the surrounding pad. The use of these sparklers stems from the Space Shuttle program, which used liquid hydrogen fuel just as the SLS does. Any excess hydrogen gas is burned off by sending hot sparks into the area below the four main engines. Liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are the primary fuel and oxidizer for the RS-25 engines, the same engines used throughout the space shuttle program. These propellants are stored at cryogenic temperatures, hundreds of degrees below freezing, requiring advanced insulation and precise handling to prevent tank boil-off or excessive pressure buildup. The RS-25 engines represent decades of refinement, delivering both power and efficiency. For Artemis 1, further adopting shuttle technology the SLS also incorporates two five-segment solid rocket boosters stacked on each side of the main body. These boosters, adapted from the shuttle's four-segment boosters, produce 25% more total impulse by adding an additional segment of solid fuel. With modifications due to updated technology, the boosters are also approximately 2,000 pounds lighter than the space shuttles. Their immense thrust helps propel Artemis 1 through the thickest parts of Earth's atmosphere. Now, with all modifications, the SLS can produce over 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, nearly 80% of which comes from the two solid rocket boosters, and as a whole, that is more than 1 million pounds greater than the famed Saturn V rocket. At the time of its launch, this number made the SLS the most powerful rocket in history to launch successfully, only later being surpassed by SpaceX's super heavy rocket, Starship. Until this point, the SLS booster has been sitting and waiting on the pad, performing checks and preparing for launch. The data ensures every system operates within precise limits before the launch is allowed to proceed. This careful choreography is critical. Even the slightest deviation could result in scrubbing the launch. Finally, as the liftoff quickly approaches and T-6.5 seconds to launch is crossed, valves inside the rocket open and the turbo pumps fire up, mixing the liquid hydrogen and oxygen held inside of the rocket body. The fuel mixture is then moved into the engine's combustion chambers. Here, the fuel is ignited by an augmented spark igniter, a flame at the center of the injection head, and the resulting ejection of the burning fuel through the rocket nozzle creates the immense thrust needed to lift off from Earth. Moments before T-0, the rocket's internal computers take over, entering terminal count, where the control shifts entirely to the automated systems on board. Massive hold-down clamps keep the rocket steady until solid booster ignition occurs approximately 0.1 seconds after T-0. Now, as the four engines begin firing up for their maximum power, clocking over 500,000 pounds of thrust each, the propellant can be seen growing whiter and hotter by the moment, indicating stronger and stronger thrust. From a deep yellow-orange to a blistering white, the rocket gains as much power from the RS-25s as it can prior to solid rocket ignition. The plumes from the rocket engines fire downward into an exhaust pit underneath the stack, which carries the flames, heat, fuel, and other discharged materials away from the rocket so as not to damage it. Though it can't be seen from this angle too well, an immense water deluge is being poured over the pad. This is done to ensure the sound from the rocket, which creates immense shock waves, is dampened and does not damage the launch pad or the launch vehicle. Finally, the engines reach maximum thrust and stability. T-0 is crossed, and the solid rocket boosters ignite, creating the remaining 6 million pounds of thrust required to send Artemis into space. Now, as the solid rocket boosters come alive, vast plumes of smoke and fire emerge from each base, 
adding to the torrent from the other four liquid fuel engines that have already been firing for a few seconds. The hold down clamps finally disengage, releasing the overwhelming torrent of fire and fury, allowing Artemis 1 and the SLS to begin their launch into space. The rocket slowly rises, building up speed as it starts to clear the tower, sending the spacecraft on its journey to orbit the moon. Smoke and flames from the engines quickly envelop the entire pad, and before long, the camera's view becomes obscured. The roaring engines, visible only through brief flickers of light, pierce through the fog, creating a dramatic spectacle. Artemis embarks on its monumental journey, symbolizing humanity's enduring quest to explore the cosmos. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe for more content.